This review is of I by Frank Herbert, the author of Dune. This is a compilation of some of his short stories. It is published by Masterworks of Science Fiction and Fantasy. Let's see. Berkeley Science Fiction. And here is about him and the book. So this book was published in 1985. And I just came across this book a, a few months ago. It's pretty old. And these are the stories that are in here. This, this book is not actually about Dune, even though the image on the front is a Fremen from Dune. Um, and some of the other images have to do with Dune. This is just a variety of different stories set in different places in different times. It's uh, science fiction, of course, and interesting. The first story is called Rat Race, and this is the illustration that goes with it. It is about a very clever detective who notices something wrong with a funeral home and decides to investigate. He runs into some problems and very nearly gets killed, um, but he survives and he discovers a very disturbing truth about that funeral home. Um, it's an interesting story. It's kind of low-key. Um, I, I like it. I like the concept. I don't think the execution was as good as it could have been. Um, it seemed to me to be more targeted toward the masses in terms of its intellectual power, but that's okay. It was an interesting short story. Uh, the second story was Dragon in the Sea, and there's an image. So Dragon in the Sea is about, um, it's some kind of a world war that's going on, and one of the groups that are fighting against the other groups is somehow stationed underground uh, with tunnels that go into the ocean. It seems to be that this is... Um, involving different factions in North America, but it's not entirely clear to me. And they've been using submarines, very special submarines, to um, sabotage and defeat the enemy. But the enemy has caught on and has been sabotaging their subs. And so they have assigned a tech uh, officer to one of the subs to determine what's going on and uh, resolve the problem. So, um, the story goes on and, and it seems that there's something definitely that wrong with the sub. Um, there is some clear evidence of what is probably sabotage, um, or at the very least, uh, extreme carelessness by the team that prepped the submarine, but it never actually answers the question, it kind of just suddenly and abruptly leaves you wondering. You turn the page thinking, oh, there's going to be another chapter, but it's the next story. Um, I found this, I think this was an attempt to develop a sort of paranoia or suspense, um, but there's... Um, it, it never, it never crescendos and it doesn't, I, um, really go far enough in my opinion to really make it as interesting as the premise of the story could have made it. So I, I kind of felt was left wanting on this one. It's, it's a fail to me. It's a failed cliffhanger. Um, the next story is Ceasefire, and 
Um, this is about a scientist who's stuck in an observation post where um, on, the, on the front of a war where um, snipers target anything that looks like it could be an observation post until they uh, actually find what they think is one and then it's bombed. And this scientist is watching as a sniper and the bombers are attempting to locate um, posts in his area when he comes up with a solution to make it impossible for that to continue. And in fact, the solution is so monumental that it will end the war. And he receive, he, he goes to his uh, officers, and he's not a very well-liked person for whatever reason, and he goes to his officers and tells them, and they don't believe him, they put him in jail. But eventually he gets um, support and approval and comes up with a solution, but the top brass are not happy about the solution because it opens a can of worms as to what will happen since this technology that he develops will have to be replaced by something else. Maybe warfare using knives. So it's, it's and I, I shouldn't have told you that much of that. Sorry about that. Uh, but um, I found, found this one to be interesting. Um, and I think uh, this is one of the better stories in the book. The next story is A Matter of Traces. And um, this one is about bureaucracy in a galactic um, kind of conglomeration of uh, planets and, and cultures, uh, specifically the Special Subcommittee on Intergalactic Culture, which includes a saboteur um, who takes action to make sure the meetings don't go too long. Um, it is humorous and interesting and reveals that one of the people in the story is related to a very famous man who invented a very famous um, machine. Um, I like the story. Uh, it's kind of lighthearted. Um, and interesting. Um, it, I think it was more a commentary on government. And for that reason, I think... Uh, it kind of uh, gives us some some interesting perspective. How accurate or not, I don't know. I've never been in a subcommittee in the government, or any committee for that matter. But it was it, it's a good it's an interesting, enjoyable read. Following that is try to remember, and in this particular story. What is apparently Earth is visited by an alien spaceship that gives them an ultimatum uh, to communicate with them. If you succeed, your reward will be great. If you fail, the, it will result in the destruction of all sentient life on the planet. And so the... The, uh, the premise goes that way and unfortunately um, the various factions of, a, of the world are divided against each other instead of uniting to try and figure out how to save the planet from destruction by communicating with these aliens. Um, at the very end, um, no, I don't want to spoil it for you. Um, on the one hand, it's a very interesting concept. On the other hand, there is a failure in execution that it revolves around the instructions from the aliens in which the original message uh, from the aliens is altered to complete the story. Um, so I think in some respects it's a, a very interesting story, but you know, I, was, I, I was left kind of disappointed by that little tweaking to the meaning of the message from the aliens. The next story is called The Tactful Saboteur, and i uh, got this very interesting image here, the, um, which is actually the boss of the saboteur um, being shown there. The, 
it's it's about an organization of saboteurs that are part of the government and um it demonstrates the cleverness of one particular saboteur in simultaneously supplanting his boss and, and as well as averting a major confrontation uh, with another uh, group of non-humans. Um, and, and it's, it's um, both amusing and uh, complicated and clever um, and I thought it was very well executed. I think this is one of the best stories um, and also a very entertaining story. Um, some people might have trouble kind of following it, but for me it was very enjoyable. And after that is The Road to Doom. So I did lie a little bit. There is one story. Um, and this is the image. Um, well, actually, it's, it's a series of images, I should say. Uh, from Dune by the um, artist who has prepared the uh, illustrations for this book. And so it's a nice little addition with explanations from the author, Benny Gesserit. I think you'll recognize her. And then the next one is by the book. And here's the image of the hero of the story, a, um, a very skilled, I guess you could say, mechanic um, who's been called in to repair um, a problem with an intergalactic transportation system that previous engineers uh, and mechanics have not only failed to uh, fix but have been killed by. Um, and he actually manages to figure out the problem and goes down in the history books and that's all I'm going to tell you about it. Uh, it's interesting. Um, it's a, a little bit tedious, I, I kind of felt, um, but if you're a, a more of a tech-oriented kind of person, you might uh, find this one a bit more interesting uh, than some of the other ones. Um, after that is the story Seed Stock. And here is the image. This is about a colony that was sent to a planet that was supposed to be a really great place for them to live, but then they discovered that the all the animals and plants that they brought were dying off, and so they were starting. They had to start learning to how to harvest their nutritional needs from the native plant life, and there is a um a dominant group within the bureaucracy that is resistant to the idea of i guess you could say integration between the um um earth species and the local species to produce hybrids that are superior um which is part of the reason why they're struggling so much. So, I, I don't want to spoil the end of the story. Um, it's not a, a technological story. It's not really science fiction. It's more along the lines of biological sciences um, and societal, uh, cultural things, um, as, long, as well as bureaucracy. So it's, it's interesting. Um, and I think he executes this one well. The next one after that is Murder Will In. And there's the image. And this is about some kind of a almost immortal uh, pair of creatures that are not physical but um, live as parasites within biological organisms. Um, they're there's, there's the, the Tegas, um, and there's the Basset. I hope I'm saying those correctly. And they have the ability to um, transfer on death from their current host to a new host if they can find a host that has the right set of emotional characteristics. And in this story, the 
not only do they come very close to being extinguished because they are having trouble finding a new host to transfer to, um, but they also are having problems with some of the personalities of previous hosts that they've had um, becoming involved in affairs and it becomes very confusing um, and there's a twist at the end and I thought it was very interesting um, and um, kind of, it was a, cl a clever story. This is one of the ones that I particularly appreciated. I wish he would have developed it more, however. Um, I think that he could have taken that story further than he did. The next story, uh, next story is uh, Passage for Piano. And here's the image. And this is about um, a group of scientists and stuff um, who have been selected to go on a colony ship to a planet far, far away and with their families. And um, one of the key families has a child who is um, very difficult and very attached to his grandfather's piano, who he was very close to and passed away. And he's also a virtuoso on the piano. Um, and the story develops that if the boy can't take his piano with him to that planet, he will likely commit suicide or um, just kind of fade away and die. Um, and so they try to figure out a solution. Um, I thought this was interesting and um, it is a really good example of how people in leadership can compromise to come up with a solution that, although it may not be appreciated by everybody, will be appreciated by enough people um, that it won't matter, um, that there's a minority who won't be happy about it. Um, especially since it doesn't actually negatively impact the ones who don't like it. <clears throat> so it, um, it's very interesting, and I think it's a wonderful commentary on how we could <clears throat> certainly try much, much harder to get along well um, and make compromises with each other instead of resorting to violence and sabotage and torture and things like that. <clears throat> and then uh, there is just one, well, two more stories left. Uh, Death of a City is um, a bit obscure. Um, there is what's called a city doctor who's brought in uh, because he has to decide what to do about a city that is incredibly beautiful, but is also the source of a lot of problems. And um, it, you really have to read carefully and read the whole thing through to kind of grasp um, everything about the story. Because at the end, it takes a turn that you absolutely would not expect. Um, and if you haven't paid a close attention to the not so overt explanations of why the city doctor is going to have to have something bad done to the city or different done to the city, um, but also why the ending ends the way it does. Um, so I it, think it's, it's clever. Um, it's a bit obscure. Um, and for some, for that reason, some people are not going to um, appreciate it. Uh, um, but it is a kind of a philosophical story. Not, um, yeah, it's a, a philosophical and psychological, not really about uh, science. Um, the last story is a very short one called Frogs and Scientists. And this is a commentary on how uh, people from an outside culture um, can easily misunderstand what people in a different culture are doing and either overestimate or underestimate the value of those things from but from the perspective of some frogs and that you know it's 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 at the one on one side it's it's lighthearted and funny because of the ridiculous assumptions that the frogs sometimes make. Um, on the other hand, it is a very apt commentary on how we constantly uh, either overestimate or underestimate the value of a different culture based on whether 
what they're doing is in alignment with what our culture thinks. And when I say our culture, I mean your culture as a reader, as the reader, um, uh, how well it aligns with the culture that's being observed. And, and having lived in Indonesia for 15 and a half years, um, I can definitely relate to this because there were times when I looked at something in Indonesia, I was like, oh, this is so stupid. And then later I was like, oh, actually this is very clever. And there were other things about it where it was the reverse. I thought it was clever and it wasn't. And there were other things where my opinion at the start was right or my opinion at the start was wrong. But um, I think this is a wonderful commentary on how we, from a position of ignorance and cultural bias and blindness, will judge other cultures. Um, so the last two stories of the book are really more geared toward trying to make us aware of just how biased and short-sighted and narrow-minded we can be. So overall, um, I didn't know what to expect when I started reading this book. At first, I thought because of the foreword from the author, I thought it was going to be about Dune. And then it became clear it's not going to be about Dune. And um, the Dune was just a... Um, the connection to Dune was basically because Frank's an author, the author of Dune, and the artist was interested in, in Dune-like images and, and so on and so forth. Um, and there is a commentary by the uh, art, uh, artist, like I said, that can give you more insight into his motivations in terms of the um, art that he made for the book and how it all worked out with Frank. Um I didn't find this. I, I thought that most of the concepts in the story of the stories were very interesting. I didn't feel like the execution was necessarily that great. Um, so for me personally, um, sometimes I felt like, oh, this is such a waste of time. And other times I was enjoying myself. So um, really, I, I would give this book a six and a half. Um, if you're a Frank Herbert fan or you're interested in a series of short stories that are of a variety of categories, um, you know, from detective to science fiction to um, cultural to psychological and so on and so forth. Uh, you, you might enjoy this, um, but certainly it's not a masterwork um, in, in my opinion. So um, six and a half. Thanks for watching and hope you have a great day.